How did you get in the streets? How? Yeah. Just all the things caught up to me, like the, the, the bills from Diamond. She got sick a couple of times. She had to have a couple of operations, and then there was uh, medication, and, and she had to have special food, like can, special cans of food, because she had an infection inside after the operation, different things like that. But I was at work one day, and I got sick, and I was getting dizzy, and I, I kind of fell off the back of a milk crate onto the floor, and I hurt my back. Okay, well, I couldn't go back to work, so I was like three weeks that I wasn't working. I could have been on unemployment, right? Well, he wouldn't give me my T4 slip, so I couldn't get money. I, I couldn't work, I couldn't get money, so I ended up on the street. I couldn't pay the bills. You know, maybe I shouldn't have been buying her a steak every night and cooking it for her. I just wanted her to have the best. So a lot of it was my own fault for being there, and I accept that. I guess you could say I was clinically dead three times. I OD'd on heroin once, I drowned twice. I had a uh, contract put on my life once. You know, I had, I had a beautiful girl in my life. She got, she got a divorce from her husband. She went back to the drugs, so I had to leave her. her my stepson of 17 years old couldn't accept the fact that I left his mother and that she went back on the drugs. He's 17 years old. I loved him like my own son. He goes to the graveyard and blows his head off at 17 years old, right? And I and you know and I and I and I and I, and I had you know I, I I had this you know it was there, and I might I I mean uh, I have to deal with it. I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff over 52 years. Since I was 10 years old, I've been an addict, right? The first time I used cocaine was when I was about 10 and a half. I didn't know, but it was given to me to help, help me make, make me more sexually active for a girl that, I, that had taken me from my way home from school, took me in her house. She was 25 years old, okay? She took me in, she said, do you want to drink a juice when I was on my way home? Next thing I know, she's touching me and playing with me in her house, okay? She got me active and she was having sex with me. I was sweeping floors when I was 10 years old at, at the same time that this started happening. So I was starting to get little bits of money, so I started doing things like I found older people that had drugs. I could buy drugs myself. So as I'm sweeping floors, I'm learning myself how to be a body man. I'm watching the other guys do the work. And now I'm doing body work. By the time I'm 12 years old, I'm painting cars, like the fender, the door. So I'm actually getting a paycheck. You know, it's only like $30 a week, but you know, back then that was a lot of money. That bought a lot of drugs. So by the time I'm 15 years old, now I'm making good money. So now I'm supporting my, my addiction. I'm working. I have my own little apartment. I'm taking care of life. And a lot of people didn't know at that time that I was actually a full-fledged addict. Beginning of my life, the first, the, only, the the thing that's most clear to me is feeling pain when I see somebody that's suffering or somebody that's in, in pain or being hurt or being abused. I actually felt their pain, so I needed. As I got older, I knew that I could numb that and I didn't have to deal with it, along with using the drugs. Like it took everything away. It escaped everybody's normal reality, right? The normal reality that everybody goes to, everybody else deals with that stuff. But when you're an addict, you don't do that. You keep piling it up and piling it up and you keep getting high and you keep burying it. Well, after a while, as you get older and you become, you know, involved in your addiction, it just kind of keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's just like a, be, uh, it's like being in a bucket of shit. You know, you, you, you keep trying to get out and there's always more coming in on top from things that you do to keep your addiction going. What's your, one of your biggest remorse? that my mother died before I changed. She was working because my father was an alcoholic, so he didn't work. He just drank the money. And uh, she got cancer. She came home from work one day. She was sick. Well, apparently she had cancer longer than she told people because she wanted to keep working. So um, 
She came home, she, got, she was too sick to go to work, so she went into the hospital. They didn't let her come out of the hospital. They told her the cancer's too far, you can't go home. She said, I'm never gonna give up on you, to me, right? Because I'm, I'm the worst, I'm the, I'm the baddest, you know, out of the family, the addict, you know? She believed I was gonna change. Yeah, yeah, and I'm going to. You know, it's like they say everybody has the devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. My whole life I listened to the devil. I don't blame anybody for anything that happened in my life. It was all my doing, right? You know, it's, uh... But it's time now to make it right. You know? I'm not going to escape who I am, you know. I'm still alive. I have to face who I am, I have to accept who I am because 35 years of drugs never took me away, never made me lose my mind, you know, it's not going to stop who I am, I can't escape who I am. I want my life back, I want to be in, uh, responsible for me and I want to own my life. And if she didn't come in my life I was going down, I would have been, I probably would have tried to commit suicide eventually, she's shown me so much and she's a dog. And she's shown me so much, you know, she opened my eyes to, you know, to how we're supposed to socialize with, I socialize with people now the way she socializes with dogs. And she's my biggest thing right now, like she means the world to me, she, she brought me from loneliness and, and depression and sadness, you know, she, she's brought so much joy in my life. I have to make her come first because I owe her my life. Right, Diamond? Hey, Daddy owns you his life. She don't understand that. You know, she don't understand. Hi, Diamond. Hi, pretty girl. Hi, pretty girl. You smell the puppy? Did you smell that puppy? Diamond, you want to go to the dog park? Move up the dog park for a little bit. Hey? You're a good girl. I love my baby, you know that? I love my baby. That might be. If I didn't have diamond and I had my apartment, I went. I didn't. You know, I went home every night after work and sat by myself. Eventually, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know, get depressed. I'm gonna get sad. But I talk to her. Yeah. And it's like she don't say, "Okay, yeah, Dave, I know. Uh, I, I, I'll try to help you with that." Yeah. She's not like that, but she looks at me. And she comes up and she sits beside me and she listens to me. And I get stuff out. She gives me a reason to be strong, right? And an addict needs that coming into recovery. He needs to be needed, needs, a, needs uh, to know that he's making a difference in his own life and as well as others. That makes a big difference when you help somebody else. It's not just the addict sitting there. There's a lot more to just that addict. There's, there's, there's a beginning to that person. That person has a sister, has a brother, has a mother, has a father, has uncles, nieces, nephews. When you want to help somebody, if you really sincerely want to help somebody, be their friend. Listen to what they say. Listen, hear what they say because if they don't get it out and get all the negative out of their mind and get the positive coming in to take over where the negative was, they're going to stay where they are and they're going to be addicts again. And that's what it basically comes down to. I mean, I see people walking by me all the time and my head might be down and I might look like I'm talking to myself, but for me, God has been in my life, my whole life. And that pain that I used to feel when I was a little kid, what I'm realizing now was that was God talking to me, telling me that he wants me to help the people that I feel the pain for. That's why he's making me feel their pain. I shouldn't have been ashamed of the pain I feel. I shouldn't have been afraid of the pain. I shouldn't have been trying to hide the pain and I shouldn't have been trying to escape the pain. When you feel that for a, for a person that you see suffering, that's what you're supposed to act on, right? And if you want to act on it and you feel that you're strong enough and wealthy enough and healthy enough to do that, you have to make a commitment to stand by that person and fight for that person because you can't just say, oh, I'm going to give them a couple dollars, I'm going to buy them a, uh, you know, a, a coat or a pair of boots. You have to make a commitment 
to listen to what they're saying, listen to what's in their heart, listen to what's putting them there and keeping them there. Mm -hmm. That's what helping an addict is about. And that's why it's so hard for addicts to get off the street, get clean from drugs, because that has not happened yet. What I'm talking about hasn't happened yet. I mean, this is what I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it understandable for people that are walking by, that want to help. I, I want them to understand the whole picture, right? And if I can be an example of that, I'll spend the rest of my life being that example, if that's what it takes.